Chapter 17 of Hopalong Cassidy's Wrestler Roundup or Bar 20. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by John Brandon. Hopalong Cassidy's Wrestler Roundup or Bar 20 by Clarence Edward Mulford. Chapter 17 mr trendley assumes added importance that the wrestlers were working under a well-organized system was evident that they were directed by a master of the game was ceaselessly beaten into the consciousness of the association by the diversity dash and success of their raids no one save the three men whom they had destroyed had ever seen them but like tamale jose they had raided once too often mr trendley more familiarly known to men as slippery was the possessor of a biased conscience if any at all tall gaunt and weather-beaten and with cold black eyes set deep beneath hairless eyebrows he was sinister and forbidding into his forty-five years of existence he had crowded a century of experience and unsavory rumors about him existed in all parts of the great west from canada to mexico and from sacramento to westport his name stood for brigandage his operations had been conducted with such consummate cleverness that in all the accusations there was lacking proof only once had he erred and then in the spirit of pure deviltry and in the days of youthful folly and his mistake was a written note he was even thought by some to have been concerned in the mountain meadow massacre others thought him to have been the leader of the band of outlaws that had plundered along the santa fe trail in the late sixties in montana and wyoming he was held responsible for the outrages of the band that had descended from the hole in the wall territory and for over a hundred miles carried murder and theft that shamed as being weak the most assiduous efforts of zealous cheyennes it was in this last raid that he had made the mistake and it was in this raid that frenchy mcallister had lost his wife when frenchy had first been approached by buck as to his going in search of the rustlers he had asked to go alone this had been denied by the foreman of the bar twenty because the men whom he had selected to accompany the scout were of such caliber that their presence could not possibly form a hindrance besides being his most trusted friends they were regarded by him as being the two best exponents of gunplay that the west afforded each was a specialist hopalong expert beyond belief with his colt six-shooters was only approached by red whose winchester was renowned for its accuracy the three made a perfect combination as the rashness of the two younger men would be under the controlling influence of a man who could retain his coolness of mind under all circumstances when buck and frenchy looked into each other's eyes there sprang into the mind of each the same name slippery trendley both had spent the greater part of a year in fruitless search for that person the foreman of the tin cup in vengeance for the murder of his wife the blasting of his prospects and the loss of his herds buck out of sympathy for his friend and also because they had been partners in the double y now that the years had passed and the long sought for opportunity was believed to be at hand there was promised either a cessation of the outrages or that buck would never again see his friends when the three mounted and came to him for final instructions buck forced himself to be almost repellent in order to be capable of coherent speech hopalong glanced sharply at him and then understood red was all attention and eagerness and remarked nothing but the words have you ever heard of slippery trendley harshly inquired the foreman they nodded and on the faces of the younger men a glint of hatred showed itself but frenchy wore his poker countenance buck continued the reason i asked you was because i don't want you to 
think you're going on no picnic i ain't sure it's him but i've got some hopeful information besides he's the only man i knows of who's capable of the plays that have been made it's hardly necessary for me to tell you to sleep with one eye open and never to get away from your guns now i'm going to tell you the hardest part you're going to search the staked plain from one end to the other and that's what no white man's ever done to my knowledge now listen to this and don't forget it twenty miles north from last stand rock is a spring ten miles south of that bend in hell arroyo is another if he gets lost within two days from the time you enters the plain put your left hand on the cactus sometime between sunup and noon move around until you're over its shadow and then ride straight ahead that's south if you goes loco beyond last stand rock follow the shadows made before noon that's the quickest way to the pecos you all knows what to do in a sandstorm so i won't bore you with that repeat all i've told you he ordered and they complied i'm telling you this continued the foreman indicating the two auxiliaries because you might get separated from frenchy now i suggest that you look around near the devil's rocks i've heard that there are several water holes among them and besides they might be turned into fair corrals mind you i know what i've said sounds damned idiotic for anybody that has had as much experience with the stake plain as i have but i've had every other place searched for miles around the men of all the ranches have been scouting and the plain is the only place left them rustlers has got to be found if we have to dig to hell for them they've taken the pot so many times that they reckons they owns it and we've got to at least make a bluff at drawn cards mebbe they're at the bottom of the pecos here he smiled faintly but wherever they are we've got to find them i want to holler kino if you finds where they hangs out come away instanter here his face hardened and his eyes narrowed for it'll take more than ye three to deal with em the way i'm a hankerin for come right back to the double arrow send me word by one of your punchers and get all the rest you can afore i gets there it'll take me a day to get the men together and to reach you i'm going to use smoke signals to call the other ranches so there won't be no time lost carry all the water you can pack when you leaves the double arrow and don't depend none on cactus juice you better take a pack horse to carry it and your grub you can shoot it if you have to hit the trail real hard the three riders felt of their accoutrements said so long and cantered off for the pack horse and extra ammunition then they rode toward the double arrow stopping at cowan's long enough to spend some money and reached the double arrow at nightfall early the next morning they passed the last line house and with the profane well wishes of its occupants ringing in their ears passed on to one of nature's worst blunders the staked plain end of chapter seventeen recording by john brandon